In the year 2002, the Rosary, which is one of the most important forms of prayer for Catholics, underwent a change, or shall we say an update. Pope John Paul II instituted the Luminous Mysteries. Highlighting the Christocentric nature of the Rosary, the Pope considered it appropriate that there be a meditation on certain particularly significant moments in Jesus' public ministry. And one of these important moments is the Transfiguration of the Lord, the feast that we celebrate this Sunday. To grasp the significance of the Transfiguration, we need to pay close attention to the first reading. The selection of the reading from Daniel reflects the interpretation that identifies Jesus as the one like a human being, or the Son of Man. The significance of this title lies in the history of the people of Israel. After Nebuchadnezzar's conquest of Judah in 587 BC, Judah no longer had its own earthly king. They were ruled instead by the Babylonian Empire who oppressed the population. The rule then shifted to the Persians and then to the Greeks. After the Greek Empire collapsed between the years 167 and 164 BC, the Seleucid king Antiochus IV Epiphanes persecuted his Judean subjects and not only did he profane the temple in Jerusalem, but he also halted the regular sacrifices to Yahweh and established a military garrison in Jerusalem. The reading from Daniel is set in this context. The vision of the one like a human being offered hope to Jews who had been subject to foreign rule for over four centuries and now were victims of state terror and persecution. In the face of hopelessness, Daniel's vision allowed them to see something different, the end of empires and the rule of God. The king who persecuted them would soon pass away just as the other before him had done. In its place, God would establish a new and everlasting kingdom that would not pass away. The dominion of one like the human being, the Son of Man, is everlasting and His kingdom will never be destroyed. In the second reading taken from the second letter of Peter, the false teachers are accusing the apostles of fomenting myths. The author is referring to Christ's transfiguration and once again affirms that he was the one of the three who heard the voice on the holy mountain. The author tells these Christians that they will do well to heed scripture. The transfiguration of Jesus serves as a prophecy of parousia, that is, the second coming of Jesus. Prophecy is not a matter of personal interpretation, nor does it come by human will, but is moved by the Holy Spirit. Like Old Testament prophecies, the Perusia prophecy is also uncomfortable and ever-threatening. The Gospel taken from Matthew in which we have the account of the Transfiguration was also a part of the readings on the second Sunday of Lent. I have placed the link here if you wish to refer to that reflection. When we look at the Transfiguration, there is a tendency to focus on the glory of Jesus. Jesus' shining face and dazzling white clothes with the appearance of the iconic Old Testament figures Moses and Elijah and surely the ever so spontaneous Peter, ready to build tents for them all. However, when we look closely, the story of the transfiguration directs us away from Jesus revealed in glory to the walk down the mountain and it invites us to walk with Jesus into the suffering, hungry crowds. I would therefore base my reflection on the present situation in India, which is rather grim. The video that surfaced recently on social media showing two kooky women being paraded naked by a mob brought to light how gruesome the violence in Manipur has been. Countless lives have been lost. Thousands of people have escaped into neighboring states to save their lives. Countless others are staying in relief camps in the state itself. With each passing day, the humanitarian cost keeps multiplying. And just as we were beginning to come to terms with the situation in Manipur, there is violence spreading in another state, Haryana. 
Well, we would like to stay on the mountain with Jesus and continue to bask in his glory. The reality is that Jesus is telling each one of us today those same words he told his close friends, Peter, James, and John. Get up and do not be afraid. Jesus asks us to get up from our comfort zone. He asks us to get up from our indifference. And he asks us to get up from a small world of personal concerns and join him as he goes down the mountain to reach out to those in need. The voice from the clouds commands us to listen to Jesus. But listening is more than mere hearing. It involves action. What is Jesus asking us to do today to make a difference in the world? We cannot afford to keep sitting on the fence and be silent spectators anymore. Transfiguration means a radical transformation. Are we ready to make this radical transformation not only in our personal lives, but also in the way we respond to the things happening around us? I pray that we too may find hope from the vision which gave hope to the Jews of Daniel's era and inspire us to reach out in our own ways to our brothers and sisters who are facing persecution at the bottom of the mountain. God is in charge and ultimately God will triumph over every evil. If you would like to contribute in any way to the relief efforts being carried out by the Jesuits for those affected by the violence in Manipur, do write me an email or leave a comment. Take care and God bless.